about five years, about five years ago, someone approached me to build them a website and do some marketing for their business. And to be honest, I came away from that meeting thinking this person is bonkers crazy. This guy is mental, but I might have been wrong. Now, the guy said to me he was an inventor and he had created solar panels that work at night without any sun. Now, frankly, my mind couldn't understand how this could be possible. And I just wrote this guy off, walked away and thought, yeah, I don't think this is going to work. Anyhow, it turns out years later, I was wrong. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back everyone else. Thank you for tuning in. Great to have you here on the channel. And what an amazing year it has been for renewable energy worldwide, wind generation, storage, electric cars, battery technology. Everything is coming, well, not in a direct line downwards in cost, but it's coming down in price thanks to new technology. New technology is driving everything forward. It's changed. There's no way now that anyone 30 years ago could have looked forward 30 years into the future and said, you know what? Solar technology is going to cost X. Wind technology is going to cost X. Battery is going to cost this. They would have thought, everyone would have said, you're crazy, you're dreaming. Just like what I thought about this guy who claimed solar panels could generate electricity at night. A team of researchers at Stanford have proven that this guy was right. You can generate energy through solar panels in the nighttime. It turns out that the coldness of outer space is also an extremely important renewable energy resource, says a researcher from Stanford. Now it goes without saying, but of all the energy solar panels generated last year globally, well, None of that energy was produced at night. However, new research is showing that doesn't have to be the case. Researchers at Stanford modified commercially available solar panels to generate a small amount of electricity at night by exploiting a process known as radioactive, known as radiative cooling, which relies on the frigid vacuum of space. I kid you not. The research was published in April of this year in Applied Letters in Physics. We tend to think of the sun as the important renewable energy resource, said Shan Hu Fan, the lead researcher on the project. The coldness of outer space is an extremely important renewable energy resource that we're not taking advantage of. Now, while the modified panels generate a small amount of energy compared to what a modern solar panel generates during the day, that energy could be still very useful, especially at night when energy demand is much lower, the researchers said. Now, yes, of course, we use wind generation, wind energy during the night times, and possibly even batteries sometimes during the night period in this perfect scenario where we only use renewable energy, right? And wind generation is coming down drastically in cost, especially offshore wind but still there'll be times when the wind doesn't blow enough or doesn't give us enough energy. And that's where this could come into play. Technically speaking, the modified panels don't generate solar electricity at night at all. Instead of exploiting sunlight or starlight or moonlight, which still doesn't really work, the researchers added technology that exploits radiative cooling. When an object is facing the sky at night, it radiates heat to outer space, which means that an object can become cooler than the air temperature around it. This effect could have obvious applications in cooling buildings, but the difference in temperature can also be used to generate electricity. Now, you can, you know, I'm sure you've heard of the buildings now that are generating massive amounts of solar. New buildings now are using thin film solar PV on all window surfaces in order to generate solid. And it's in a way that you don't even know it's there. I mean, this solar film is transparent and it's just being applied to enormous city buildings. And these buildings have become completely energy independent. Now imagine the heat that would be stored in that, potentially that could be used in this process to create electricity at night. 
Fan, a professor of electrical engineering and his fellow researchers added technology to a commercial solar panel that could do just that and were able to generate a small amount of electricity at night. This modified, this modified panel generated 50 milliwatts per square meter at night. While that's much more than previous iterations of this technology, it's well below what a commercial solar panel can produce during the day. One back of the envelope calculation returns close to 200 watts per square meter for one commercial solar panel. One watt is equal to 1000 milliwatts. So this is a much lower level than that, but it could still be useful for some of the low power density applications. And that might include nighttime lighting, charging devices, and keeping sensors and monitoring equipment online. And the other thing worth considering is when we first invented solar panels, they were hopeless. They did almost nothing. And guess what happened? Technology got better and better and better and better and better. And all of a sudden, before you know, solar panels became useful and then more useful and then more useful. And then the price came down further and further and further. Now, the same exact thing could happen with this technology. It's new technology. It's not going to be that good at the start. But give it 10 or 20 years, we'd be looking at something entirely different to what we have today. Fan says that the modifications were made to commercial solar panels, which means the technology could be widely deployed. He also said that by improving the design, more electricity could be generated. There are still a lot of questions to be answered before any commercial application can be rolled out. Jeff Smith, Emeritus Professor in Applied Physics at the University of Technology in Sydney said in an email response to some questions about this technology. Smith, who was aware of the research but not involved, therefore, maybe a little jealous, I don't know, has doubts that it will ever be economically viable source of energy. Adding complexity and avenues for degradation to renewable energy systems, despite being scientifically interesting, rarely makes it in practice, he wrote. The thing is, people said the same thing about solar panels 50 years ago. Now, the research proves that you can generate electricity in this way and wasn't meant to prove anything about future practical applications. Though, Smith agrees that greater attention should be paid to outer space as a renewable energy source. In his view, cooling and other modes of electricity generation are equally, if not more promising. But the night sky just could be a valuable avenue for shifting energy use. Even if it's not yet producing a lot of electricity, radiative cooling is pretty much ubiquitous. Every time you're outside, you're actually doing it. Now there is another option to this though. And in fact, I believe it's much more probable in terms of harvesting energy at nighttime. A solar power really to work at peak efficiency needs as much sunlight as possible. And to actually maximize their performance, well, human beings aren't doing it yet. To maximize solar panels sun catching performance researchers are well considering sending them to a place where the sun never sets where might that be it's out of space theoretically if a bunch of solar panels were blasted into orbit they'd soak up the sun even on the foggiest days and the darkest nights storing an enormous amount of power if that power were wirelessly beamed down to earth our planet could breathe in renewable clean energy 24 seven, and it would also reduce temperatures on the planet, avoiding global warming potentially. This would reduce our carbon footprint enormously. Against a backdrop of a worsening climate crisis, the success of space-based solar power could be more important than ever. The state of the climate is in. Now, next generation tech like space-based solar panels and solar power can't solve our climate problems completely. We still need to rapidly decarbonize our energy systems, but green innovation could help achieve those goals. In the early 1900s, Russian scientist mathematician Konstantin Solkovsky was steadily churning out a stream of futuristic designs envisioning human tech beyond Earth. He's responsible for conjuring things like space elevators, steerable rockets, and space solar power as well. 
Since Bell Laboratories invented the first concrete solar panel in the 50s, international scientists have been working to make Solkovsky's sci-fi fantasy a reality. They include Japanese researchers, the US military, and a team from the California Institute of Technology spearheading the Space Solar Power Project. You probably never heard of it, but it's a real thing. Space Solar Power was investigated extensively in the 60s and in the 70s, sort of in the heyday of the Apollo program, said Michael Kalzenberg, senior research scientist on the project. Unfortunately, due to the material's weight and bulk, I mean, they were made of concrete back then, right? The era's technology wasn't advanced enough to cost-effectively achieve this feat. Back then, it would have been exceptionally difficult to send classic solar panels, which weighed massive amounts, to space via a rocket without, well, costing billions of dollars. But things have changed drastically. SpaceX now has reusable rockets that can send things into orbit at a fraction of the cost, and solar panels are now much lighter. The distinctively unique and defining feature of the Caltech approach is a focus on reducing the component mass by 10 to 100 times, said Harry Atwater, the project's principal investigator. This is essential to reducing both the manufacturing and the launch cost to make space solar power economical. So could we have a sky full of solar panels? You betcha we could. Instead of rocketing traditional solar panels to space, the Caltech team advocates a new type of panel that's lighter, more compact, and foldable. They suggest dispatching into orbit a huge number of these airy mini solar panels resembling tiles. Each individual tile has everything it needs, like photovoltaics, to harvest solar, solar energy. When connected in space, the little squares essentially make a giant renewable energy mine floating around the Earth. Here's what they said. The increase in effectiveness really comes from the fact that by putting them in space, they get huge amounts of intense sunlight because the sunlight doesn't have to come through the atmosphere. They also get sunlight 24 hours a day. When the sun shines on these panels, they'll absorb bundles of direct current or DC energy. In the team's mechanism, that energy would get translated into radio frequencies. The next step would be to bring that power down to Earth. And here's the tricky part. This would happen, though, according to the team, through microwave radiation. Radio frequency energy would be beamed toward our planet onto areas reminiscent of solar fields in the desert. But in place of what are typically solar panels, these regions would contain receivers with antennas that collect the harvested energy. It's basically wireless energy transfer, something Nikola Tesla famously alluded to in the late 19th century. Using such radiation, Kelsenberg says, allows the system to operate in rain and fog at night and during storms, only risking disruption by the most severe weather. However, one question often raised about wireless radiation patterns is whether they would adversely impact vegetation or features of the land or make us all a bit crazy. The company says that isn't a concern. The power density received on Earth would be equivalent to the power density in sunlight on a sunny day. And systems for space solar power can be designed to be intrinsically safe. So, after the Earth-planted receivers retrieve the energy in the form of radio frequencies, they'd work with the ground station to convert it back to DC energy, which would then be transformed into alternating current power, which is AC power, and fed into the utility grid. So is this possible? Well, not only is it possible, it's actually happening. He said, our first space flight to demonstrate space solar power component technology is scheduled for late 2022 on a commercial spacecraft. I believe that aircraft, that spacecraft, is Elon Musk's SpaceX rocket. The thing is, if space-based solar power becomes a reality, it could, and absolutely would, change the world. Not only could and would it help power remote areas like places in Africa and balance out the power grid to prevent outages, it could also send energy to mining operations on other planets. Space solar power can be deployed to remote areas on Earth where there is not an existing utility grid. 
It could also be used to generate baseload power on the moon or Mars via a similar scheme of orbital power generation and beam it to the surface. But most importantly, the energy humans could generate via 24-7, 24 hours a day sun power would be enough to meet the climbing demands of our planet's energy and replace nuclear and coal power. Of course, there is a long road ahead. Even if the team's 2022 experiment is successful, there are manufacturing costs to consider, as well as legal questions about taking up orbital space. And other questions would come up around the practicality of replacing known power grids with space solar power plants, which, yeah, could be political issues as well. That said, I think we can all agree that getting a cheap solar panel and putting it on the ground is going to cost a lot less than launching one into space. But the real value here of space solar power is the ability to serve solar energy 24 hours a day. Not only would this bring Nikola Tesla's vision of the future, his sci-fi vision of the future to reality, it would change the world. Now let me know what you think about this. Is it possible? Do you think it could ever happen? even 10, 20, 50 years from now, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And as always, my friends, have a great day. Bye-bye.